Shalom Yasharala. First and foremost, I'd like to start this lesson by giving all praises, honor, and glory to the Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son. Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, Rechaha Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well and taught me this 100% truth. Double salutations to the Akim out there spreading this word in truth and sincerity and shalom to the few Akwath that are listening in today. I'm back at you with another lesson entitled Folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. Alright? Because um, if you notice, the foolishness of this world is what is um, highly regarded, you know? Like, it's easy for you to become a TikTok success if you just go around doing clown-like things or if you just go around dancing. So like you. You know, doing some silly sort of dances or whatever. And you can easily get, what, a million hits, 500,000, whatever, man. But then you come around with this truth, this true wisdom, knowledge and understanding that is able to save um, um, the Israelites... If they was to, to you know, hearken onto the word and, and make it a part of their life, right? They would actually have that chance of salvation, which is far more uh, greater than anything else you can attain in this life. But things pertaining to salvation is set in a very low regard, all right? You have brothers out here dropping gems, man, you know, dropping these, these brilliant sit-downs. Brilliant edification on these scriptures, exhortations, and they get no views. On top of them getting no views, their channels be getting hit with strikes, right? Not allowing them to, to, to upload videos for a certain amount of time, whether it be a week, two weeks, or completely locking off the channel. But then you go on YouTube as well, and you, you can have a music video with a, women that are pretty much naked, man. Everything you've revealed, you know, um, or a lot of, um, or, or they'll push like um, degrading activities, iniquity. All right, they'll broadcast that all over the all over the internet, man, on the YouTube, and they won't say anything about it. And that, those are the things that will get the most views. All right. But then when it comes to this truth, no one regards it, man. It's of no importance. That's why the title of today's lesson is Folly is set in great, in great dignity and the rich sit in low place. Who are the rich? The Israelites. Beginning with the elect of the nation of Israel. We are the rich. Alright? Not these devils, man. These devils have, uh, have pretty much stolen our riches. All right, they have changed the whole financial system, the whole monetary system, in order uh, uh, for it to work in their favour and to work against us. And this is what we're dealing with right now. You know, we are under the curses of Deuteronomy 28, although we are slowly being alleviated of those curses, beginning with the elect, and they're coming on to the Edomites now, right, our enemies. But we are still under those curses to this day, man. And we ain't going to be fully alleviated from them until Yahweh Shai comes back to redeem us. Okay? Lord willing, we'll be of the elect. <laughs> Excuse me. So without further ado, <clears throat> Salaki. Let's bring out this precept. We're going to start here in the book of Ecclesiastes, where I actually got the title of this lesson from. This is Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 6, and it reads... <clears throat> <clears throat> folly is set in great dignity and the rich sit in low place and you see through each generation we have we have lowered uh um, um we've become to a um what's that word lower estate through each generation this is the lowest estate that we've ever been in in existence man and that was done by what through our sins, through our iniquity, brought us to this very low estate that we're in right now. Okay? 
verse 7. I have seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Because really and truly, these other nations, the heathens, beginning with the Edomites, are our servants. But they're the ones that are sitting on horses. Now, horse, a horse represents power. For example, you have a car and, uh, uh, the, you know, how fast it goes or the power of the engine is, is measured in what? Horsepower. Okay. However, this is literal as well because you had um, the Edomites during, you know, when we were serving our hardcore bondage, which we're still in captivity now, pursuing to Baruch 3 and 8. You know, you have, uh, uh, you had the, the Edomites on horses and, and um, as it says here, uh, princes, which are the Israelites, walking as servants upon the earth. And there was even a, a statue that they had in America, and I believe they destroyed it. They, they uh, um, um, you know, pulled it down, where you had this Edomite sitting on a horse, and then you had uh, a Judite on, I believe, the left-hand side, and he had a Gadite on the, on the other side. One way or the other, right? Oh, and I forgot who the name of that Edomite was. Oh. So, Lucky, let me see if I can find it real quick. And if I can't find it, then it is what it is. We'll move on. But uh, it would be really great if I can. So, just bear with me a minute. Bear with me. Lord willing, ah, here we go. Okay. I'm just trying to find out the name. Hold on. Bear with me a minute. Yeah, Theodore Roosevelt was his name. All right, and uh, have a look. Hold on. Have a look. <clears throat> got an Edomite who were by the name of Theodore Roosevelt sitting on the horse and then on this side you have a, a Judite brother and on this side here you have a Gadite brother all right but we are the princes Yashar Allah means prince of the power okay we are the princes of the most high the princes of God but as it says in the scriptures here Ecclesiastes 10 and 7. I have seen servants upon horses, these Edomites, the other nations, and princes walking as servants upon the earth. Right? Everything has been turned uh, uh, upside down. You know, we have been brought into the lowest estate we've ever been in, man. All because of our iniquity, because of our transgressions. All right? Yeah, you still got Jake out there who talking about, um, oh, but how comes the so-called white man can't be saved? Don't you know, <laughs> if you go into the history on all the wickedness these Edomites have done unto you, uh, now in your current life and in your past lives, you would understand why the Edomites will not be saved, man. And why oh, um, they're going to serve their hardcore captivity. And after the thousand years of them serving their hardcore captivity, they're going to be completely destroyed eradicated you know they like to make uh, uh um, certain animals extinct well they're going to become extinct all right let's go to jeremiah chapter 4 and verse 22 and it reads for my people is foolish they have not known me you know you got our people calling on jesus on yahweh yah ahaya 
um, Allah, Buddha, the universe, okay? And that's all foolishness, man. For my people is foolish, they have not known me. They are sottish children and they have none understanding. You know, you have these Christians talking about, well, I've read the Bible cover to cover. And you still have no idea what the hell it's talking about. You still, you still believe um, that that Yahweh Shai is a, is a, is a, is a cracker man, an Edomite. You have scriptures like what is it Daniel seven and nine, Revelation one and verse thirteen on down, proving that Yahweh Shai is 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 a is a um, a dark skinned melanated man. Oh, but I've read the Bible from cover to cover. I, I, I got the understanding of the priest. Oh, you can't tell me anything, man. As it says here, Jeremiah 4 and 22, For my people is foolish. They have not known me. They are sottish children, which is another word for foolish, right? So you can say a synonym. And they have none understanding. They are wise to do evil, but to do good, they have no knowledge. Our people don't know how to do good, all right? They don't know how to, or nor do they want to walk in the ways of Yahweh Ba Hashem Shai. Our people, look, we're in the grace period right now. The question is, what are you doing with it? Are you sitting there wasting time, you know, in that do as thou wilt spirit? Oh, the Lord hates this, hates sin, not the sinner. Making all these excuses just so that you can go eat that pork chop or you can go uh, um, um, commit adultery. You can go eat that crab or whatever it is, man. What are you doing with your grace period? And unfortunately, two thirds of the nation of Israel, they, they, they are, um, you know, they're making the most of, of that do, do what thou wilt spirit. All right. Thinking that the Heavenly Father is just some gigantic teddy bear and, and he's just going to forgive and forget. Which, I mean, ultimately, he's going to forgive the, uh, um, the nation of Israel. But that's not without judgment first for you, for you wicked two-thirds that are unrepentant, man. Okay? And, you know, these Christians like to go about talking about they're saved. But what, what are you saved from? Saved from what? You see, this, this, you know, the, 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 the folly of, of the Christian church is, you know, reached a whole new level, man. A anyone can be a pastor. Just, just bring out John 3.16. And you're, you're, you're a preacher, man. You're a pastor. You can, you, you can come in as a murderer, you know. You, all you got to do is give your life to Christ and call on Jesus. And you, you can do whatever the hell you want, man. And our people don't want to come into this truth because they know that, it, it, you know, there will be suffering. You will have to suffer in this truth. There's no way around it, man. You know, things ain't always going to be your way, but our people are not comfortable with being uncomfortable. Well, I'm afraid to be in this truth. You're going to have to get comfortable with being uncomfortable. Our elders tell, tell us, man. I believe Elder Apostle Taha likes to say, um, you know, you have um, something to the effect of you have to learn to love to suffer because that's all that's going to happen in this truth, man. You are going to suffer for righteousness sake. Okay. Let's go to Luke chapter six. This is Luke chapter six. And verse 24, and it reads, But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. All right? If you're rich and you're prospering in this society, why the hell would you need a saviour? You don't need a saviour. You're living voluptuously right now. And that's why most of the people, they ain't looking for the Lord. They ain't looking for the truth. They ain't trying to repent because they got it all good now. But they don't understand that the triumphing of the wicked is short and but for a moment, man. And that our people are pretty much fighting for a corruptible crown. You know? Chasing the riches on this side. 
indulging in wickedness just to have a position here in Esau Edom's world. Right? Luke 6 and 24 again. But woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. Because this, the thing is, us who are teaching this truth, in all sincerity, we are spoken ill of. A lot of people like to say, oh, we're involved in a cult. Oh, yeah, why would you want the world to end? Oh, yeah, you're, you're this and you're that. But, I mean, come on, man. We are living in a society right now where you, can, you, you, you as a little girl, little five-year-old, six-year-old girl, can wake up one day and tell your mother, Mom, I'm not a girl. I want to identify as a keyboard. You know? You got talks now saying how there's more than two genders. Okay? Scriptures say, you, uh, as a man, you can't lie with mankind. The woman can't do the same either. But now we're living in a world where you speak out against, you know, the alphabet people. You're, 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 you're wicked. You know? But this is the same world that the people want to continue. And, you know, you've got Esau, Edom causing uh, uh, um, earthquakes, man. Man-made earthquakes. You're living in a society where... How, look, look. Bro, all these chemical spillages in America right now, you know, it's, it's still happening now. It's still happening. These so-called accidents of all these various toxic chemicals, toxic waste, affecting food production, affecting the water that you can drink, affecting all manner of livelihoods, right? You've got the, uh, 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 these wicked rulers doing all these things, right? But this is the same world you want to continue on. And then you want to, uh, um, you know, you want to speak ill against the men out here who are risking their lives trying to wake you stupid, ignorant, two-third Israel, not two-thirds, but, you know, you Israelites up because you know two-thirds ain't going to wake up. But we're the ones that are ill-spoken of, man. That goes to show you that that truly... The earth is given into the hand of the wicked and his deceit is working, man. Second uh, uh, Corinthians, I believe it's 2 and 11 says, um, lest Satan should t get an advantage of, advantage of us for we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, unfortunately, the rest of the world, excluding the elect, are ignorant of Satan's devices and that's why they're being swallowed up by them, man. You got people out there who, if, 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 if there was around an alphabet person, they're looking at them in disgust. You know, what's wrong with this guy? What's wrong with that girl? Right? Now they're embracing them with open arms. That's why the scripture says, and if it be possible, he shall deceive the very elect. But it's not possible, man. But the whole, the, the rest of the world have been deceived beguiled by, by uh, uh, um, this devil, man, okay? They've been beguiled by the ways of wickedness, all right? Let's go to James chapter 5 and verse 1, and it reads, Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. What is it saying? Second Ezra eight and fifty for many uh, uh, um, for many great miseries. Let me just bring it out real quick. I don't want to butcher it. Second Ezra chapter eight and verse fifty reads: For many great miseries shall be done to them that in the latter time shall dwell in the world, because they have walked in great pride. And the heavenly Father he hates pride. All you prideful individuals out there, you, you, you boy. And you, you wait and see what the Lord is going to do, man. And as the title of the lesson, folly is set in great dignity, man. Meaning foolishness is set in great pride. 
People take pride in foolishness. That's crazy, man. That is crazy. And then when we're talking about how, oh yeah, the Lord is going to destroy this place for his wickedness, oh, we're the bad guys. The real fucking bad guys are your, 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 your so-called governments and leaders and politicians, man, and the shadow government, which you don't even know about. Those are the real bad guys, man. all crazy man James chapter 5 verse 2 your riches are corrupted and your garments moth eaten your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire ye have heaped treasure together for the last days all right these these uh, uh wicked elites they're um they're greedy man you know, the Edomites are in power right now, but you still got certain Edomites out there living on the streets. There's a very uneven distribution of wealth amongst the Edomites, man, let alone Jake. And they've heaped these treasures for the last days, and part of those treasures are the Israelites, the Most High's crown jewels. The Edomites have, have, have stolen the Most High's crown jewels and refused to, to, uh, uh, to cough them back up, so to speak. Just like in ancient Egypt, man. So this is modern day Egypt. There's no new thing under the sun. All right. Verse four, behold, <clears throat> the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth, right? Sabaoth, what? The troops of the Heavenly Father, all right? The holy angels, the nuclear missiles, the elect men that will be raised up with spiritual power, okay? That's the Lord's army, man. And you see, it says here that we have been kept back by fraud. Because this, this paper money that we deal with now is worthless, man. The only thing that gives this paper money any value, even this digital money, is the idea of it having value. The Edomites have deceived the people because back then you would have paper money but that was backed by silver or gold. This paper money is backed by nothing, man. They can just print out more money and more money and more money. It's worthless. During the time of Jacob's trouble, and when they uh, uh, um, unveiled this MOTB across the four corners of the earth, the only thing that paper money is going to be valuable for is wiping your ass. Verse 5. Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Because look what he's doing to our people. Excuse me. And it's not like you got Jake running buck wild, trying to, um, you know, overthrow our enemies, trying to overthrow the Edomites. But, but yet, look how they treat us, man. Verse 7. <clears throat> Oops, I just lost it. Verse 7. Be patient, therefore, brethren, unto the coming of the Lord. Behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and latter rain. So Yahweh Shah is waiting patiently for us, man, to, uh, uh, for all the elect to be woken up to this truth, for all the elect to be sealed. And then shall the destruction come. The book of Revelation talks about how the angels are holding back the four winds until uh, 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 the elect have been sealed, roughly paraphrasing, man. Okay. Verse 8, James 5 and 8. Be ye also patient. Establish your hearts for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. I know everything that's going on in the world points to the coming of the day of the Lord. Salvation is nearer than when we believed, man. All these things are happening, and whilst all these things are happening, you still got majority of the world in a deep sleep. 
have no idea what's going on. Then that um, what's that? Second Thessalonians chapter two. Uh, two. Uh, peace and safety. Peace and safety. Peace and safety. F first Thessalonians. I mean, Second Thessalonians. First Thessalonians, five. And verse 3, and it reads, For when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. Right? And everyone, because it seems like events are slowing down now, you don't have to walk everywhere with your mask on, you know. You're not at the moment, you're not being forced to take the, the, the jump shot, okay? Everyone's in that peace and safety spirit right now. Wow, the time is one four four right now. We've been numbered amongst the hopeful elect, you know? So everyone's, you know, crawling back into their little hole. Oh, yeah, everything is fine. And it's funny how people forget things so easily, man. Because really and truly, the American people... The majority of them should be bugging out right now with all these chemical spillages and so-called accidents that they're having, man. But you see, the people are so docile and so submissive, right? And, and they're so quick to forget about these things that with all the, you know, it will happen one week, the next week will happen, but what happened the previous week has already been forgotten about. Long time disregarded. And they make no correlation, man. <laughs> Damn. It's crazy, man. That's why we have to be grateful to Yahweh Ba Shimi Al Shai for waking us up to this truth, man. Because we are walking with, with, with light. We are filled with light. We have wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, man. And, and, and we are, the things that we learn are making us wise unto salvation. That's nothing to take lightly, man. Because all these other people, man, two thirds of the nation of Israel and uh, the other nations, they're all going to be destroyed and are going to suffer greatly in the times to come, man. All right, let me bring out this final precept. This is Sirach chapter 10 and verse 3, and it reads, An unwise king destroyeth his people, but through prudence of them which are in authority, the city shall be inhabited. And who and isn't Esau Edom unwise? And isn't he destroying the people? You got people concerned about how many likes they're getting on Instagram, trying to do these bogus TikTok. Excuse me, these bogus TikTok challenges trying to rack up the most views, doing some folly because folly is set in great dignity, but that's because of uh, uh, um, um, the unwise rulership of the wicked. Okay, verse 4, Ecclesiasticus 10 and 4 The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord, and in due time he will set over it one that is profitable. Who is that one that is profitable? That is Yahweh Shai. Because even in Israel, you had wicked kings, man. All right? So we need a king to be set over us that's profitable, and that's Yahweh Shai, who will be able to fully fulfill his father's will. And, you know, Yahweh Shai is not going to go off, man. The kingdom to come is going to be a complete kingdom of righteousness. It's going to be ruled in righteousness. And that's why after the 1,000 years of Esau's hardcore captivity, we're not going to have any need for Esau. And that's why it's going to be completely eradicated because all Esau, Edom is, is an example of how not to rule. So Esau, Edom, his time is up, man. You just wait and see what the Lord is going to do to, the, uh, to these devils, man. All right? So anyway, that's it for, to, uh, uh, for this lesson, man. You know, hopefully this lesson has been edifying. And until the next time I say Shalom.